Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a brand new tutorial video by WTTN. And today we'll be talking about a very important aspect in WPF programming, the event handling. Now event handling is a very, very vast topic and that's why we're going to break down into smaller videos. So today we're going to cover the most basic ways of handling your events. So anybody who is starting out in WPF or coding in general, events are nothing but actions. Actions that your application performs which are then captured or which raise functions which are executed for functionality. So basically events are actions and event handlers are the functions that are performed on that particular action. It is as simple as that. So. Without further ado, let's get started with the basic and the most simplest way of writing down an event handler for one particular event. So as you can see, this is Visual Studio 2012 and we will be using C Sharp as our back or back coding or language of preference. So inside this particular Visual Studio, we have this brand new WPF test uh, setup, which is a WPF application. So just go to File, New, Windows, and then WPF Application. After you have created your project, this is the main window. The main window will have nothing in it in, besides the grid. So we are going to define a stack panel because I'll be showing you two ways to do event handling and I need two buttons. Orientation will be vertical. This is not compulsory. You can skip this part. Okay. So the first way and the most basic way is the static mapping of the event and the event handler. Now to do this, we are going to use a button. I'm just going to give it a name. Let's say BTN show. Now with this button, I need to map an event with an event handler. So my event is going to be clicked. So when somebody clicks on this button, I want to pop up a message. So Visual Studio will do all the handy work for you. The, the work is done by Visual Studio. You just have to double click on this new event handler. So as you can see, when the event is written, Visual Studio will give you the option to create a new event handler and it will do the mapping for you. So as soon as this particular pops up, I'm just going to go and double click on new event handler and it writes down btn show underscore click so close this button tag and write show message beautiful so now where is this functionality where do i write my pop-up well the pop-up has to be written in this particular cs class so as you can see we have just defined a button with the name btn show and Visual Studio has defined this particular event handler called btn show underscore click for the click event of this button. And that event handler has been defined in your CS class, which is right over here. So as you can see, the structure is strict. You need to keep this particular structure if you want to write your event handlers. If you don't want Visual Studio to generate them, you can write your own handlers, but you need to have a particular structure which has two parameters in the function's name that is object sender and routed event arguments. We'll be getting to them a little later on into my future videos because they are something which we will be using to write down more dynamic events and more dynamic event handlers. So having done these particular steps, we are now going to write down a message box. Let's have a message box that, say, uh, that says show and then have some text in it let's say test and then we'll just run this particular project so what happens is when I click on show message it will take the XAML show message binding which is click and then goes to btn show underscore click and it will display the message box dot show so this is the most simplest and the most easy way to bind any event to the event handler. Now, to check out what kind of events are present with that particular uh, component of your XAML, just go to properties. Having selected this particular 
having selected the particular component just go to properties and just click on this particular event handlers for the selected element as you can see there there is a complete list of events that are present for this particular uh, component which is the button and to bind any of the functions to this particular event let's say i want to have some event fire for drag enter i just have to copy paste the name of the event handler that i have to define in my cs class over here it is as simple as that so having shown you the first and the most simplest way this is going to be used abundantly inside your wpf application we are go now going to move on to something much more complicated something much more advanced okay so let's define one more button and let's give it a name btn show one now instead of defining any event and event handler in my xml i'm going to define it inside my cs class so i'm going to write down show message one so the second button has no click event or no event handler associated with any kind of event yet we are going to have a pop-up for this button as well so how are we going to do that it is extremely simple just go to your cs file for that particular xml and inside your constructor as you can see you have a constructor after your components have been initialized you can write down btn show one dot now as you can see the same properties and events that were there in xml are available to you in your cs as well so the click event is available in cs as well so once you write down dot click you have to add your particular event handler to this particular event and that's why it's plus equal to and not equal to we are adding inside the click event queue my particular event handler for this particular event and that's why it is plus equal to instead of equal to so let's write down new and since this is a dynamic binding of the button with that particular event it is not a normal event it's a routed event handler and that's why we're gonna go routed event handler now inside the parentheses of this particular we need to pass which particular function needs to be executed which particular event handler needs to be bound to this particular event and that is btn show clicks so i'm binding the same event handler for two different buttons in two different ways but they both will work because the binding for one is in xml and the binding for other is in cs both of them valid and that is why both of them will work as i said it is firing test for show message one as well and that is how you bind your events in the wpf application so these are the two very basic ways of binding events inside your wpf application we haven't gone into any more advanced settings and passing parameters and all those things because that is going to be covered in two our future videos i wanted to make this very space uh, very basic and very simple for people who are just starting out so i hope that these particular ways and these particular methods have gone uh, gone and been informative for you i hope you try these out on your own and you can write down a comment as to what is the next step that you would like me to perform you would like me to have a video series about regarding wpf wcf java javascript or even website development any of it just write down in the comments below leave a message for me if you have anything project specific to ask me on my facebook page the facebook page details are in the description below if you liked my videos if you want to have more and more videos just do subscribe to my channel and i will see you next time with a more advanced tutorial on event handling so thank you for watching and have a great time